How the hell are ya? Oh, I love that sound. I live for that sound. I do, I do. I love this time of year, you know, next week. Next week, guys, it's the thing. Spooky stage. Our annual spooky stage. I'm sorry, new guy said spooky stage, so I'll say, ooh, <laughs> thank you, spooky. Spooky stage is our annual Halloween-themed event. I did, I got a little, I'm, I'm starting to monster out, how about that? <clears throat> I thought it was going to, there it goes. <laughs> These are old timey effects, you have to use your imagination. But it is next week and it's a big deal because every year we've brought a show and now that we've moved to this giant space we can put on a giant Halloween festival. I'm really excited to let you guys know that we've got a couple of surprises in that show that I can tell you about now since you're here. Do you want to hear about them? Yeah! Surprise number one, come in costume, because we're going to have a photo booth out front. Yeah. I hear our potluck will be somewhat themed. Yeah. But the big one is the, the debut of the open stage market. We've had makers in our midst for months and years, and we've promised someday we would have enough space. And starting next week, right over there, along that wall, you're going to see some of the best and brightest. If you're interested in actually vending with us, get in touch with us. We'll talk to you about it. But we are going to have... Vendors, stuff, dream hats will be there. Uh, let's see, uh, you wanna stand up so I can point at you? Jessica Waxstrom and her amazing hoops. Diamond Dave. And, 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 another, and another vendor who will remain nameless until she arrives. Well, hell, we better bring the tarot reader instead. It's Georgina. <laughs> Much safer play. So that's, that's what you've got to look forward to. We're going to start doing that every week, so that'll be a fun thing. And then as far as tonight goes, we've got a little preview of some of these, this craziness, this Halloween craziness, a little later in the evening. So are you excited about that? Yeah! That's awesome. I love this time of year because, you know, it's, it's nightmare season. That's what the circus freaks call it because we have characters that only get to come out this time of year. We had like Renfield went to a party and Mama LaRue, the Skull Dancers, Mr. DeVille, uh, well, Monkey Jacks, who we have all year, but if you've ever met him, he's sort of a tall drink of water that comes in a dark glass that he ate half of. It's just, there's really no other way to explain that. But these characters really get to shine this time of year because people are open to a little bit of spooky sound. I couldn't have said it better myself. I couldn't have said it better. So they're open to that, so we get to, we get to have, have nightmare season. The problem is nightmare season, in all truth, backstage is something of a nightmare. Um, I have performed six out of the last seven days, so I'm sort of stumbling around. Um, I love it, and I'm honored, and I'm privileged that I keep getting invited to go places and do things but it is a physical toll on the body. And eventually you start just living for the next gig just because you sleep between them. Um, life pretty much becomes eat, sleep, call time. And in fact, eat, sleep, call time, I was on my way Sunday to my kitchen to make a sandwich and I fell asleep oh, no. on the way to the kitchen to make a sandwich. <laughs> this is the kind, I just want you to have a sense of, of how hard we are working. I know, it's just done. I didn't even make it. I just fell over. Poor sleepy little clown. I love the sympathy, I really do. I really do. But the, uh, the best part is of that is that you get up, you get your sandwich, and that's a little win. And you, can't, you can look at the big picture. Yes, clowns are not starving to death. That is a big win. But a big win only helps at the end and at the beginning when you sign on. In the middle, that's not enough. In the middle, you start looking for these little tiny victories, any victory you can find. It doesn't matter what it is. You just, you need something to keep you going to the next, through the next struggle and to the next victory. I had mine Saturday. I got to play the devil, which is awesome. Typecasting, but awesome. I know. I, I, you just look at me and you know, mm, hail Satan. I know. But I get to play the devil. Even better, jokes at the ready at a Jewish wedding. Best joke of Thank you. But the best part, of course, of that was just realizing that I had cloven hooves and therefore I was off the menu.
It's like half the room got it and half the room's looking that up on Wikipedia right now. It's pretty good. So the thing was, it was a, it was a, a spooky Halloween-themed wedding, which was beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful events I've ever been to. And they invited us to go rampage through it, specifically because they had children of all ages at the event and they needed to keep them entertained during post-wedding shenanigans, which is also known as drinking and eating cake. Yay. So I'm there in, in my, my devil costume and, and Renfield is there juggling rats like he does. It's a life choice. It's a life choice. That's all I can say. And I come around the corner and the kids immediately just dig us because we're doing goofy things and we're playing games like chase them, play monster. And there's the one little kid there's the one little kid who looks at me and hasn't made up his mind yet. And you can see him working on it really hard. Is this good? Is this bad? And I realize that this is my opportunity to affect not only his evening, but certainly his parents' evening. Because if I scare the crap out of this kid, for the rest of the evening, the parents are going to remember my name. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and so I turn, and in full monster, I say, you're not afraid of monsters, are you? And he looks at me, and I go, I bet you're something of a monster yourself. Show me your monster face. And I look slightly to the left and back again, the reason why it will become apparent in a moment. And he goes, Rah! and I'm like, Ugh! we're going to hire you. You're very good at that. He's like, yes, I am, and I'm not afraid of monsters. I said, very good, Caleb. You are named Caleb, aren't you? And he goes like this. <laughs> oh, I said, well, you look like a Caleb. Now, Caleb, go on. Enjoy the party. And he goes running off to run it, and he's not afraid of monsters right up until he runs up to Renfield with the rats, and the whole process starts again. <laughs> At this point, his father, of course, toasts me with the children's sippy cup that says Caleb on the front of it. <laughs> I turn away from this and we have one of just the best nights you could possibly hope for. The kids love us, the adults love us, we pose for a million pictures, I'm hoping to get some soon. And at the end of it, I realized that, yes, I needed a win, but it wasn't mine. Tonight, that night, my win was this little tiny win called that kid isn't afraid of monsters for that long, and that's my fault. And yeah, the devil himself was in the details, but we made it happen. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that. I, I couldn't think of a better way to start off an evening like this, so welcome to the open stage.